Well, hello everyone. Uh, this is Al Fadi, and I'd like to welcome all of you to a very special Let Us Reason live stream. And uh, I've already uh, announced it over a week ago, and we re-announced it again um, in the last 24 hours. We have a very special guest with us today, Sister Shania, whom um, uh, will be introduced shortly here. But I want to, of course, thank all of you uh, who have been waiting for this moment for your prayers, for your support, for your comments. I see so many of you know Sister Shania, so that's exciting to know this. And I'm hoping that by the end of the day that everyone who didn't know anything about her and her ministry, which they have an amazing ministry as she will share, I would like for you to go and uh, follow them on Facebook and also uh, subscribe to their YouTube channel and uh, may the Lord use their ministry in your lives as well. With that said, Sister Shania, thank you so much. I am really humbled by um, your acceptance of our uh, basically invitation, and uh, I am honored uh, by your presence. So please, uh, you know, I want to turn uh, the attention to you. Introduce yourself a little bit uh, for the people who do not know anything about you, and then in a little bit we'll start talking about your background. So just briefly, in in few minutes, um, just tell people about anything you want to share concerning your background. Thank you so much, brother, and shalom, everyone. Thank you for having me. It's honor for me as well to be here with you and, and you, your friends. And uh, if I talk about my testimony of my past, I am from Somalia. My name is Shania Gabo, born in Somalia, capital of, of Somalia called Mogadishu. And uh, I used to be a Muslim, and Somalia is a Muslim country, Muslim Sunni country. and. Uh, my family are very religious uh, people, and uh, I grew up as a Muslim. What I knew was only Islam and, and, and Sunni teachings. And at uh, young age, I went to Quranic school. My family sent me there. Actually, I used to go after school as well. And every day, study the Quran and learning by heart. And it was so difficult for me because uh, Quran is Arabic language and Somalia, we speak Somali language. We don't speak Arabic. So it was so difficult for me. I tried to learn and I was studying, but uh, it was tough, tough time. Because of uh, the language, the teacher was so horrible to, to me and to the other kids. And if you cannot by heart memorize the Quran, he will hit you so badly. So uh, mm. my experience was so bad. I remember one day, after a few years going to the Quranic school, one day I could not memorize the Quran and it was so hard to me. And he repeatedly tell me uh, to, to, to read the Quran without, the, without memorizing, just without even the, the seeing the words. And I could not do it. And uh, he he used to hit us with big stick. They, in Africa, they have a stick. The teachers can hit you. The Quranic yeah, school, know, the I teacher know. can hit you. Uh, mom and dad can hit you. So uh, he had a big stick, but a stick that day, he could not find any stick. You know what he did? I was using, normally we, we were not using a uh, book and pen. We've been using a uh, wood, wooden uh, board to write it down. The Quran, and he took that uh, stick. It's not stick, but the the wooden board. I don't know how to say in English. Uh, it's, uh, I'm sorry, my my English is not that good. Uh, if if you you're don't do, understand, you're doing fine. You're doing what fine. What I'm talking about, my the Lord explained to you. But anyway, he took what I had and uh, write it down the Quran. He took that and hit me in my my forehead my face and i remember bleeding the blood was cover my face and crying and thinking i'm dying and i run to ho uh, uh, home and uh, my mom welcomed me and my family no one took uh, they took me to hospital they helped me but no one even take this man uh, to the police or said anything because he's a quranic teacher and that's the day i said after that i could not go because i had the fear of him and I didn't want to go back to Quranic school. So that day I stopped going to the Quranic school because of that uh, nightmare, that experience I had. But anyway, we grow up, in, but Somalia on that time, I don't know if many of you know Somali people or Somali country, the country itself used to uh, live like a, a European 30 years ago 
because when I think it was 50 years ago, we had the colon colonize. You've been uh, colonized, yeah. Yeah, 70 years ago, and uh, there was uh, where I come from was Italian, and the top north Somaliland was in, in English, uh, British people. But when they left, people used to live like a European. And uh, when I was young and going to school, we could not cover our hair. We used to use like a mini skirt, mm -hmm. T-shirt. But after that, the civil war started and people left the country and they came. We came to Europe. But after that is when it started, our country become a become like a Muslim country because a lot of uh, they took over in Al Shabaab right. group called Al Shabaab take over and, the country. I want you, yeah, I want you to hold your thought. That's an interesting transition because I want you to highlight how these things impact the society, like what happened in Afghanistan. So yeah. give me a second here. I want to thank everyone for joining us. You are watching another Let Us Reason live stream with me here is Sister Shania from Somali Christian TV. This week, she is sharing her journey to Christ. Next week, the same time on Saturday at 3 p.m., uh, New York Times, 8 p.m. UK Times, her husband will be with us as well. And we always like to highlight the journey of our dear brothers and sisters and anyone who's interested in being on our show, especially those who are involved in ministry. Theirs is a very powerful ministry reaching a very special group of people. That's the Somali people. And that's what our sister here is talking about. I remind everyone, please, to pay attention to our amazing moderators. I want to thank all of them for uh, the wonderful job they do. And please keep it focused on the topic. If you have any specific question for Sister Shania, make sure you put that in the comments section. Try to put Sierra International uh, in front of it or my name, Al-Fadi, so that I can pay attention to it a lot quicker. So dear sister, you said yeah. everything was even after the um, you know colonization ended and uh, uh, you know everything was almost like Europe. And you hear the stories yeah. in Iran. Yeah. You hear the same story in Afghanistan, and all of a sudden, uh, f fiction emerges, civil war starts, and then what happened? And what was the cause for the civil war in the first place? Oh, yeah, the civil war, uh, because we had uh, in one government more than maybe 21 years or 20-something years, and uh, he was uh, the president of Somalia. His name uh, uh, was uh, Siad Barre. And uh, many people used to call him dictator because they did not want only one person or one government to lead in the country more than 20 something years. And uh, they were so fed up and they just wanted to just um, throw him out from the country. And that's what started the, the civil war. But after when he left the, uh, the, the people or the, the country, every tribe, because we have so many background, so many tribe, if you know or not, and, and or, or cloud, I don't know how to say, it, tribes, uh, different tribes. And every tribe wanted to take the power and to be the leader of the country. So if you have like 100 different tribe and every tribe want to be the president of Somalia, we have only one country, cannot be 100 president in one go. So that's after that, uh, the, the, the war, become like a civil war and a tribe against a tribe, neighbor against a neighbor, family against other family, and they start killing each other. And until now, 30 years later, our country destroyed. And on that moment, when after that, it started this group called Al-Shabaab, take over the half of the country or maybe most of the country leading them. And they make our country like Afghanistan and force our women to dress like Afghanistan women and men to dress like an Afghanistan man, basically. Yeah, they force us and they change the, now, cult the culture. Why do you think, um, you know, groups like Al-Shabaab Al are reacting this way? Uh, I mean, because I want the people to understand that uh, whenever these radical groups take over, they begin, I mean, Somalis are Muslims, but for some reason, they act yeah. as if the Somali people are not Muslims at all. Yeah. Yeah, they, they are extremist people. They are like same like in ISIS. They just kill each other. They kill other people. They kill anyone who's against them. So they, they changed the country. They said, if you are not their group or you are not Al-Shabaab or you're not supporting, 
you are not real Muslim. I hear even stories. Uh, they stop people going to cinema or theater or going anywhere, and they start to, and even the girls school, they they stop girls to go to school, or they said some of them, if they go to school, has to be separate. A school for boys or school for girls. Before we used to just sit next to each other and dress whatever we want, but now everything changed. And after that, they even I even hear one time uh, they even kill some young boys because they were watching football. Imagine if they were watching other things. So they just destroy our country. And after that, become other other different names. I don't know the, the Muslims. We used to be only Sunni. But now it's like maybe 70 or 80 different sect, uh, sect of, uh, they all call themselves uh, Sunni, but they are different. And they all call each other uh, Kufar or other group. They are not real Muslim. We are the only yeah. real Muslim. That's why they're killing yeah. each other. And they above that, they have also tribe. And they, it is very sad situation. But now 30 years okay. later, still, it still is it's not it's not like the government is not strong enough and the country is not 100 uh, percent and free to live or freedom to to choose what you want to choose or dress the way you want to or freedom to go because they use a uh, suicide bomb bomber and uh, they're killing each other all the time yeah yeah Very how can yeah, it is sad indeed. And uh, thank you for sharing this. I know it's hard and, and we do not want to downplay the importance of this. And I want to thank uh, those of you who are joining us. Uh, Islam Critique, uh, thank you so much, brother, for uh, your super chat. And indeed, I agree with your comment that we do have a great guest here today. We are so honored by having our sister Shania to share her journey. Okay, dear sister, you know, uh, I understand the position that people like al Shab are, are using and, yeah. and why they are uh, in their mind, they're perceiving that the Somali Muslims are not following Islam. But is this causing the Somali people to rethink about Islam? If these are the Muslim people who are killing them yeah. and calling them kuffar, for instance, yeah. is that prompting them? especially the young generation, to rethink about Islam? Yes, many are now uh, rethinking and many are searching other way out. And uh, yeah, people are just dressing that uh, dress and uh, cover themselves, but inside they are empty. They want to way out, you know. And more people know Islam and what it says in the Quran, more they live, you know. Even me being Muslim many, many years, I did not know anything about the Quran. Even if I memorize, I did not know what it means. You know, the surah I'm praying every day, I did not know what, what it means because it's not in Somali language, it's Arabic language. And uh, seriously, when I left Islam, um, I get help from many people, like people like you, brother. Thank you so much. And, and other people like uh, David Wood, Sam Shamoon, are the people I met, I've met from the internet first time when I left Islam and thanks to them, they helped me. And I was so shocked hearing from like this group of people like David Wood and, and Sam Shamoon and, 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 and Jesus and, and, or Muhammad, that was the show they used to have. I was so shocked and hearing, you know, those things, what they saying about Islam and everything was truth. And I was, I was thinking, it fascinated me seeing David Wood, who is a Western white American man, know much more than me and many Muslims I know. Many Muslims I know, they don't know anything of what it says in the Quran. So he opened my eyes and opened, uh, and actually I, I shared with my, my husband and he was still Muslim that time. And uh, we used to check whatever he's saying, and it is true. And now I believe the Somali people, when they find out what is real, the real, real face of Islam, people, as soon they know, they will leave, yep. but they don't know. So tell us, tell us more specifics now. You said you left, went to Europe, and, yeah. and then what happened after that? Uh, how, what, what changed that began to help you focus on following Jesus, for instance? So and we left in Somalia because of the civil war, come to Sweden and uh, I get married, my husband and I, and uh, we were still Muslim. And the first time I see Somali woman cover her head to toe or dress like Afghanistan was in Sweden. I was shocked 
And I said, what they are wearing? What is this? And uh, one by one, my neighborhood, they started saying, oh, this is the real, real Islam. Now you have to wear this dress. Now you have to be real Muslim now because we live in infidel country. And we came to Sweden and Sweden is an amazing country, beautiful people, they welcome us. They, and we learn the language. My husband and I, God has given to us two kids. So we had a good jobs, both of us. And uh, you know, we've been living in Sweden, we become Swedish citizen and uh, living in Sweden 12, 13 years. And 2005, in the beginning of 2005, I said my hus to my husband, let us move to UK because I said, I want to learn English. I could not say one word English. I could not communicate with anyone. And I said, please mm. let us move to UK because we are Swedish, we are citizen. Let us move to UK. And when I learn English or the kids are young, we can come back to Sweden. But God has another plan. All that years I we've been in Sweden, no Christian come to us. No one shared the gospel with us. No one invited me to church. I never even met any Christian, a Swedish Christian. So it seems like we are in Europe, but we, we are in a Muslim country because all the Somalis or all the Muslims, they live same area. They move in one, one area. They have their halal shop. They are like living the, like they are in their own country, you know? But uh, 2005, when I came to the UK, that's when God has saved me. So Amen. It might, my testimony starts from seriously from there because no one shared the gospel with me. I did not know any Christian. Like I said, I came to the UK, uh, just want to know the language and learn the language. And before I even learned the language, and I, my husband started working as a taxi driver because he has to take care of the family. And right. I, I was uh, just in uh, preparing and uh, going to class just to English speaking and listening because I'm auxiliary nurse. I want to work care home or hospital, something like that. I was planning to do that. But before I did all of that, I had, uh, we used to use internet and uh, send the emails uh, to our family and all my family, they are in Europe. They are not in Somalia. No one is in Somalia. Mostly they are in Scandinavian or in the UK. But and I used to communicate with them. One evening, my husband was working and he was on uh, with a taxi and I was mm -hmm. chatting with my family and I was in the internet chatting and waiting Salatul Isha. I was still Muslim. I was Which like a Muslim. The last even prayer, like, the last prayer, last the prayer. Day. Yeah, 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 last prayer of the day. But my heart was always empty. I used to have only fear of Allah. I never had a relationship with, with Allah because I was so scared of him because they say when you die, Allah will weigh your good deed and your bad deed and you will go wherever you've done the most. Right. And I knew my good deed was not good enough. I was so hard a fear, but I have to do my, my chores. I have to do what I'm supposed to do. Bless him, pray fast and all that. And that evening I was sitting there, kids are sleeping. She, you know, my husband is uh, working with the taxi, is out there. And I'm just chatting and waiting, Salatul Isha, and it's supposed to be 11. Someone sent me a video clip. I did not know that video, what the video was. And the video was, uh, the video clip it started with the, you know, uh, the intro. The intro was Quran, people reading the Quran. And I see a lot of men and I see the flag of Islam, the black uh, flag. And everyone, they had their, their uh, on their forehead, uh, there is no God, but Allah and Muhammad is prophet. You know, the intro, there was a lot of like a uh, clip, right. clip, about Islam and I was so excited and happy and thinking wow these people and after that when the that intro finished there was a group of men and I've seen they were reading the Quran and talking Arabic and there was another man sitting in front in front uh, them and for me Quran was so holy on that moment Quran was like my everything I was believing for like everything it says in there and they just read the quran and i'm thinking they are praying and blessing this man that was i was thinking but when they finish reading the quran one of the men took big knife from here and he chopped his head off he killed the man in front of the camera he just chopped his head off and take that and that crushed my heart crush Everything I believe in my life, it just went away 
and washed away. And I was so shocked what I see. And I started shaking. I started crying and thinking, being sick, and thinking, what is this? What kind of God is Allah? Why they read his name and they kill this man? Why he has to die in front of camera and like an animal? And I said, what kind of God are you? I started to cry and question and be angry to God first time. And I said, Allah, what kind of God are you? Why you didn't save this man? Why this has to die? This man has to die. Why they have to kill in your name? And I said, I don't want anything to do with you. I don't want to follow you no more. That's it. From now on, I don't believe in you. And that's the night I had a dream of Jesus. I left Islam. I want to become atheist because I don't want to watch this um, man who died. His name is now, I find out his name is uh, Nick Ber Barry. Nick Barry. They killed him in Iraq 2004. He was American Jewish man. Nick, mm -hmm. Nick, Nick Barry, Nick Barry, Nick Barry, something like that. But innocent young man has to die that in the name of Allah was end of my belief. I didn't want to do it anymore. They sent me to this video saying Allahu Akbar, but that's the video I left Islam on that moment. I left Islam. I want to become atheist. From that moment, I don't want to follow Allah and I want to be atheist. But that's the night I had a dream. And I had a dream, brother, Al-Fadi. And the dream was, I was standing in front of my house. I never had a dream. Even if I had a dream, I never remember. But this time, I can remember everything, all the detail. I was standing in front of my house and I have seen heaven, a man coming and he was so light, his light filled the air. He was so bright, and his, when the light filled the air, he was there, and he was calling people, come all of you, come and you will be safe. His voice was so loud, calling people. And I looked my right hand, my left hand, everyone bowed down and worshiped that man. I included myself, I bowed down and worshiped. I did not know who was the man. I wake up in the morning, I did not know any Christian, I wasn't even expecting Jesus. I do not know. And I tell my husband, last night I see this horrible clip. They killed this man and this, and, and, uh, this uh, clip I've seen. And I want to become atheist, but I've seen this dream. And I don't know who is that man. Do you think is that Allah or Prophet Muhammad? I wasn't thinking anyone else. And I remember course, my husband. I understand. I mean, and that, that's why I tell people when you ask a Muslim, did you see Jesus in a dream? They're not going to think about Jesus. They're going to no. think it's either Muhammad or, or a righteous person somehow. Right? Yeah. Yeah. And, and my husband said, cannot be Allah because Allah cannot be a man. And Prophet Muhammad, you cannot worship. So I don't know who you see. But he, he told me, why you watch that? But I was so happy all day. I want to know that man who come from heaven. Next night, before I went to bed, I remember I, I just pray in Somali language. I didn't pray as, as, a, as a Muslim. Muslim. I didn't pray the five prayer of the day. And I said, Allah, is that you? Please reveal yourself to me. I want to follow you the rest of my life. I'm sorry what I said last night. I don't want to be atheist forever. Please tell me, is that you or Prophet Muhammad? And the next night I had another dream. But this time I remember everything so vivid so clear and uh, my, uh, my mother used to tell me read the quran for her and she gave me quran and she told me to read the quran and i looked my mother's eye and i said mom jesus is the way the life the truth no man comes to the father except through him and i repeat those words i never hear those words before because i never read the bible i didn't know i'm surprised myself shocked what's coming from my mouth but I'm preaching to my mother and saying, mom, Jesus is the way, the life, the truth. And after that, she, my mom got angry and she told me, give me water. And I give glass of water, put in front of my mother and plate with food and everything I touch become cross shape, cross. And after that, she told me, you become Christian, you are infidel. And she ran from the room and I get scared. And I was thinking, What's going on? I could not control myself. I'm just saying, this is the way the life of the truth. Now everything I touch is cross. 
and she left the room and calling the, shouting the rest of the family and I, I come from big family i have 16 half siblings and brothers and sisters and my husband and my relative and i was thinking that's it they will come and kill me and that moment when i get scared guess who came back to rescue me the man i was worshiping the other night he came and stood in front of me and he lifted me up and he calling me my child fear not and he's holding me like that and lift me up and I can see the atmosphere, the roof of my house, everything. We just going upward. And he is like my dad and I'm his little child. I feel like that. And he's saying, child, fear not, fear not because you're with me. Anyway, we went up upward to the end. We came a place. The Lord showed me most beautiful place. That place, how it looked like, the houses, the color, the flower, the music, the golden road, the streets, is beyond our imagination. I don't have words to explain how it looked like that place. It's so beautiful. No word to, to, to say right in that place, how it looked like. And I was just jumping up and down. And I said, where am I? Where am I? What is this place? And the Lord Amen. said, this is the place I prepare for you and everyone who believe in me. This is heaven. That is amazing. Heaven. That's amazing because that's John 14 right there. Heaven is a real place, brother. Heaven is a real place. And it is most beautiful place. Not only I was heaven, but I was with my heavenly father. I was Amen. with my Lord. And Amen. this time he's all for me. Only for me. It's just pouring me the, his love. And after that, he showed me another place. We did not go the other place, but he said, Shania, look over there. And there was a screen you can see on the screen. And that screen was so dark. The place I've seen was so dark and, and, and only smoke coming. Very scary place. I did not want to look. And I said, where is that place? I did not want to look. I get scared. And, and the Lord said, all your family are there because they don't believe in me. Anyone who don't believe in me will go there, the dark place. But you are here with me. My child, fear not. I will be with you. I will be with you. Fear not. Fear not. I never leave you nor forsake you. Those words when he said, and I'm holding him, hugging him, my alarm will wake me up. And it seems like I'm just sent, someone just put me down to my bed. I just jumped from my bed. And I remember going to my computer and Google it. What does that mean? Jesus is the way, the life, the truth. What I was saying to my mother, am I crazy? What is going on? Now I remember the words I was saying to my mother. And I looked and John 14, 6 come. I am the way, the life, the truth. I cry for happiness. And I never leave you nor forsake. I come. Everything I ask, everything I put on there, it comes like a verse from the Bible. First time in my life, I've seen the, the Holy Bible from the internet. Yeah. And I fell in love. I want to just uh, comment on what you said because uh, I see someone uh, here who is claiming that uh, you saw Satan. You know, so I want to clarify: you double check what you saw with the Scripture, the Word of yeah. God. Yeah. Faith comes by hearing, and hearing mm -hmm. by the Word of Christ, by the Word of God. So you didn't just take the dream and make assumptions. You verified and you saw that there is something to be said from the scripture. I just want to clarify that because this person might be confused, you know, because yeah. Muhammad saw Satan, not you. Yeah. Muhammad, no. on the other hand, did see Satan and thought Satan was Gabriel. That's a whole different story. Yeah. You saw yeah. the real, you know, um, yeah. a creator, the year God, uh, the, the real God, yeah. our Lord yeah. Jesus Christ. The real God is real and it's not it's not Allah. Jesus Christ is the real God, brother. You need right. to Amen. just check the read the word of God. Anyway, if I come back to where I, I put on there how Jesus will come back. Now I know it was Jesus because I've seen from the Holy Bible everything I was saying to my mother and everything the Lord was saying to me is in front of me from the Holy Bible. And I said, how he going to come back? And there was another verse. He will come from heaven. Every eye will see. Every knee will bow down. Every mouth will confess. Jesus is the Lord. And that's what I was doing. I was the other night. I was worshiping him, the man who come from heaven. And it is from the word of God. I find that from the Bible. More I read, more I feel in love 
with the Bible. And there was another verse that says, uh, John 3, 16, for God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son. Whosoever believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. I never hear those words from the Quran. Amen. Allah never Amen. loved me, never loved every, anyone. And now I'm hearing the real creator, the God almighty loves everyone. And everyone who believe in Jesus will have everlasting life. And after that, brother, you know, because coming from Islam and you have to do good deed. Now I'm so happy. Now I'm so excited. Now more I read, more I fell in love with that moment, like five minutes, 10 minutes. More I read, I'm more I want to follow Jesus. And I said, how many good deeds I will do? I remember how many good deeds to do to go to heaven because I want to go to Jannah. I want to have a relationship Amen. with Jesus. And, and there was Ephesians. Two, eight, and nine. Thank you, brothers and sisters, who are doing good job putting the Holy Bible on the internet and opening people's eyes and all the preachings and teachings you do, you guys doing, even you, brother and Fadi, about the Trinity. It is good. People will open their eyes on the reading the word of God, for word of God. So that moment there, there was Ephesians two, eight, and nine, and it says, You are saved by grace, not your own work. But the, but the, but the gift of God. This is the gift of yeah. God through Jesus Christ, Amen. and that's the moment I, 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 I. Ah, yeah. yeah I yeah. want to ask. I was. I asked the question again. Uh, the same person who says you saw Satan now, uh, as always, changing his mind now. Yeah, yeah. He, he's saying that the person take a, an ID card and tell you, "I am Jesus. This is my full name right here." Yeah. I mean, uh, dear sister, uh, once again, maybe this person is not getting it so far. You no. saw a vision of someone who is showing you wonderful things. Yeah. You still went to the scripture the to scriptures. find the truth. Yes. Amen. Yes. I find the truth Amen. and the truth yes. is in the word of God. It is in the Bible, brother. You need to go. This person who's just debating and putting comment there, go and check your own eyes. Read the word of God. You get the answer. Answer is in the Bible, not on Amen. the Quran. Not in the Quran. So, oh, please brother, continue. I mean, continue. Yes. What happened? So, yeah. so, this moment when I find out the salvation, it is by grace of God through Jesus Christ. I said, Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Whatever it says there. I, I do not know Hallelujah that moment, but I was so happy. And I said, I want to follow Jesus. What should I say now? I Because it must come from Muslim, you need a Shahada. <laughs> Shahada. I know. I, know. No. I, I said the same thing. My wife said the same thing. We always yes. think the same way. <laughs> yes, we're thinking that because our mind is being uh, brainwashed, Islam, and uh, just uh, that you have to, you're just following, you have that uh, point of view, you know? And I said, how, what should I read? What is the Shahada? Now I just write some words, different words. And in English, uh, my English was not good, but it's Swedish, it's Swedish language. That time I was using the Swedish language and also Somali language. And I said, I want to follow Jesus. What should I do? And there was a little prayer, salvation prayer. They call salvation prayer. Read this prayer after me or read this prayer and you will be safe. And I remember this prayer, the small prayer, I repeat like maybe hundred times just to make sure I'm a follower of Christ. But brother, from that moment, when I get saved, I read the prayer and uh, salvation prayer. I receive Jesus and kneel down. And I said, Jesus, you will be my Lord and Savior. I will follow you the rest of my life. And I was so excited. And I said, I cannot be silenced. You know, God put my heart like a in passion just to share this good news to everyone who comes in front of me especially mm -hmm. Somali people, because Somali people, no one going to them, no one sharing with the, with the love of Christ. No one came to me 13 years in living in Europe. So if I don't go, who will go and tell the good news to them? So I started telling to my husband, my husband, when he came from work, I said, you know, you remember the dream I had first night, I had another dream. And now I read from the, from the Bible, I get everything from the Bible. The man I see and we worship, that was not Allah. That was not Prophet Muhammad. That was Jesus Christ. And I am his follower. And Jesus is the way, the life, the truth. Those words, I used to start to preaching people and just telling them, 
Jesus is the way, the life, the truth. No man comes to the Father except through him. Because they pray all the time, Muslim, Fatiha, Surah Fatiha. And it says, lead us the right path. Now I found the right path. I will Amen. share with everyone. Hallelujah. <laughs> So I uh, and, and brother, my persecution starts from that day. I was shocked. Okay, that's How? good. Well, let's stop right here because I want yeah. people to know that this is real. And I tell you why I want to stop you right here because there are people here that are claiming that, uh, which is typical, I'm sure you've heard it many times, that you yeah. are an actress, you're acting like you're a follower of Jesus, that you've never been a Muslim. I mean, what do you say to things like this that are absolutely ridiculous, to say the least? Anyone who would use comments like this have yet to think about what you're saying. What do you say okay. to things like this? I mean, and that person, I will say, if I'm, if I was, was never being Muslim, why you threaten me every day and saying we kill you because you're infidel? There, there you go. <laughs> so you have to have you don't need to answer. Standard. Yeah. <laughs> Every day we get a message after message. We kill you. You're infidel. You kafir. We. So that's what happened every day. So yeah, I'm Somali person. My family can't hear me now. I lost all my family, my relative, my everyone because I left so, Islam. Yeah. So but what this person is saying, what, yeah. what this person, your sister is saying that Somali yeah. people are not Muslims at all. That's what he's saying. Oh, praise is God. It? I did not know that. <laughs> Thank you. That's so, prophecy. So how that, will the that's Somali prophecy. people react to them to, to this? I mean, don't Somali people brag about the fact that they're Muslim and they even want to consider themselves to be Arab as well? They think they are Arab. They think they are the only Muslim. They are more Muslim than Arab people. They are the only Muslim in this planet Earth. You, you don't know. You know, if you go to open doors, uh, the website, you will see Somalia is always been the second or the third most persecuted country in the world if you are Christian. So how that come if we, if we, are, if we used to be uh, Christian or, or, or that? So this person, I think he doesn't know about Somalia. Google it, oh. find out Somalia Your is sister, a Sunni. None it's of them Sunni. know anything. All they no, do, they you know the parrot, we call it babbaga in Arabic. Yeah. The parrot, yeah. just yes. repeating things like this. Yeah. And what I want them to do sometimes, instead of doing this, just to do this one time and stop talking because they need it's to use talking. their brain. God yeah. has given them brain that can work. They don't. They refuse to use it. Yeah. So with that says, I want to thank, of course, everyone for uh, joining us here. We we have an amazing testimony by our dear sister Shania from Christian uh, Somali Christian TV, which, by the way, her husband will be with us next week at the same yeah. time to yeah. share also his testimony. And I'm hoping that in the future. We'll work together with them to do teachings and reach out and, and uh, yes. other things. So, dear yes. sister, you said about persecution. When yeah. did persecution start for you? For me, from day one, because my husband was Muslim, and I said to him, I'm, Christ oh, I'm Christian boy. now. Yeah. And I tell my family and everyone, even my even my neighbor, and I start working, everyone, even British people, when they ask me uh, where I come from, only that I, I supposed to share. Uh, Quickly, within one second, even if I have two minutes, I will share with Jesus. You know how, because the opportunity, many, many, even Western uh, young people in here, they don't believe God. They're atheists. So I was sharing the good news because I've seen heaven. Heaven is a real wow. place. I've seen hell. Hell is a real place. And anyone who don't believe Jesus will go with Satan. God did not make he Amen. hell, Amen. Uh, like a Muslim will say, Allah made hell uh, big and uh, just put all, all the mankind. No, our God is a loving God. He's after the one. He doesn't want anyone Amen. to perish. He want all to be safe, all to come to heaven. Hallelujah. So I'm just Hallelujah. sharing that good news and this treasure. And I, I get Your now. Sister, and, that was yeah. brave. And I want people to know that the step you took as a woman in an Islamic yeah. country and a wife, yeah. that was a huge step of courage. Yes, yeah. So for me, I was uh, uh, I was so shocked how quickly my family and my friends, my loved one, become my enemy. I have seen another eye of Islam, another face of Islam, and that face is most kept secret. No one will tell you that. When you are Muslim, Everyone welcome you. I've seen uh, some people uh, when they become a uh, Muslim, they will say, oh, Islam is peace. They welcome me. They love me. But when you leave, you can enter, but you cannot go. If you go, they will chop your head off. They don't care mm -hmm. if you are born as a Muslim or converted. 
they will kill you, they will chase you. So my family become my enemy. They went to the imams, they had the meetings, they talked to my husband and my husband and I, he was behind four years, four years he was a Muslim and I was a Christian four years. And our, our, our marriage being tested on that time, that was the most difficult time on our marriage, marriage life. And my family is straight away, they started threatening me. They started cursing me. They started, uh, they even said, yeah. I, I'm, I'm dead for them. I'm not their daughter it's anymore. Amazing. Yeah. yeah, I mean, dear sister, isn't it amazing? You have children yourself. What kind of a religion that teaches parents to hate their own? It is evil religion and it's from Satan. That's all I can say. Now I see Allah like a Satan. Satan and his book, I don't believe anymore. It's a satanic book because they're killing. It's only killing. If it's love and peace, like Islam, all the time they're saying, oh, Islam, we are peace people. Why are you chasing us when we left Islam? We are ex-Muslim now, but they, you want to kill us because we just left Islam. So it is horrible, horrible religion. And I warn everyone, if you are Muslim, think. Now they love you, but tomorrow if you say you left Islam, they will kill you. Why? Yeah. That's not real religion. That's not good. Yeah. It's very bad. Absolutely. Let me let me just make a comment. Uh, Kareem yeah. Dumfa, this is the yeah. last warning for you, and it's coming from me, not from my moderators. If mm -hmm. I read a single comment from you accusing my guest with lying or any questions of distractions, you will be blocked right here live. It's your choice. Okay, dear sister, go ahead. Oh, brother, uh, thank you so much. God, uh, Jesus said, blessed are you when you are persecuted and people call you names because uh, because of Amen. Jesus' name. So this brother, we need to pray. And uh, seriously, all the time, even when we have a live stream, our YouTube channel, people cursing and sending knives and threaten us, but we, we need to pray for them. Uh, I, I am, I'm not scared and I'm not even focused on, on this people. I'm focused other people who are open-minded who want to know the truth anyway Amen. the truth islam the the truth of islam it is another another face and that face is the face every day david wood is sharing sam shimon is sharing christian prince is sharing you are sharing my brother al-fadi that's the real face Lord. and that face they are high hidden hidden hiding from the muslims they don't know so my family become my enemy and they went to the mosque to talk to the imams and they said they have made a decision. They came and called my husband and they said, we made a decision. You have two options to my husband. My husband never been violent person. He's such a lovely and, 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 and beautiful person in his heart. He didn't want to do what and he was trying to protect me, but also trying to take me back in a nice way in Islam. It, taking me back on Islam, but he didn't want to uh, do any harm on me. But he, we had argument every day, come back. I, I, Christianity is not good. Bible is being corrupted. You know how they accuse and this comment and this day and night when you have that. But my family, they made the decision with the Imams, uh, with the Muslim Imams, and they called my husband and they said, hey, we have two options. And the two options was either take the children and leave because I'm not his wife anymore. Imagine we have two kids, mm. small ones, young ones. Wow. They need their mom. They need their dad. They of said, course. take the children, leave. She's not your wife anymore. Or kill her. Kill her. What an amazing, and, what an amazing religion that causes division in the family. Just like yeah. Jesus said, by the way, Jesus says, I did not come to bring peace, but a sword. And our Muslim friends think that Jesus is a killer. No, it's not. It meant that family will split because yeah. of this. And here's an example of that right there. Yeah, and the person who gave that message was my own mom who said to my husband either to kill wow. me or take my children away. And when he did not do that either, not of that. But for me, mm. I was shocked. I started crying and asking God, Lord, what's going on? Why they hate me? What's happening? Are they not my real family? Why they want my life? Why they after me? Why they telling to my husband to kill me? I was so shocked what I was hearing from my uh, from my family and the imams, and uh, and after that, and 
my husband, thank God, he did not left me. He did not kill me. He did not take the children. But you know, when they find out he's not doing either of that, my mom called me and, and she said, her last word she said was, you are not my daughter anymore. If you not come back to Islam and Muhammad, you are not my daughter. And if I see you, I will kill you with my own hand. Those are mm -hmm. the words she said to my, my mother. And it just could not believe what I was hearing from my own mom. And, I, and the Lord said, I asked the Lord when I cry, and I said, first two years was difficult day, for, different, uh, difficult years for me. Every day I was crying, missing my family, loving them, uh, missing them, crying like a baby, thinking what my husband will do. Is he gonna listen to them? Is he, uh, to, uh, is he gonna go? Is he gonna stay? And all that stress and they calling and threatening and my brothers and some f relative family, uh, the relative, uh, my relative uh, threatening me, calling me saying, we come, we kill you, we do this, we do that. And I asked the Lord and I said, Lord, I don't know what happened to me. What am I done to them? Why they hate me? What's going on? And the Lord said, no, they don't hate you. They hate me. Pray for them. Because of me, they rejected you. Don't take personally. Praise God for those words. I it had sense. My heart to get peace on that moment. And I started praying for them. 16 years, I did not see my family. They disowned me. But I'm here to proclaim the, uh, the good news. From day one, I start sharing my faith with others. From Amen. day one. Hallelujah. From Hallelujah. day one. From day one. And my husband gets saved four years later. My kids even get saved before my husband. And now four of us. Uh, you can see Somali Christian TV. And I used Amen. to pray. And we want to we wanna keep his story a secret until next week, right? <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Please keep it. Uh, and by the way, uh, the same person said something yes. interesting because you said the beheading, of course, was one of the reasons why you began to question Islam. And yes, this person, you know, Kareem, again, he's saying real Muslims do not kill. What is the punishment for apostasy in Sharia law, dear sister? Beheading. It is killing. They are mm. every day. Why are they so sending these messages? He just accused the entire Islamic system to be a lie, basically. Thank you, Karim. I'm really enjoying your comments. Keep we, we love them. Please, please write it down. Please write it down. People, they need to see people like him. Please do not delete his messages. Leave, leave that so other people to see. Seriously, when I get safe, I found um, uh, from uh, David Wood, like I said, and, and, and Sam Shimon and so on. Uh, and, 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 and I was so, so fascinated, David Wood, who's American, saying all this. And I used to take note, everything, and give to my husband. He was a Muslim. And say, look, this man is saying this and this. Because I did not know the Quran. I learned by memorizing, but I did not know the tasvir. I did not know what it means, you know? So now my husband is checking because he want to take me back to Islam. He's doing right. research and now he's, uh, and I'm giving those words and he will read and he say, wow, that's truth. Whatever he, David, David would, whatever he say was truth and truth and truth. And it just make my belief more, I, because I, I get more strong because now I know why people hate me because their book, why are they after me? Because their book. Why are they insulting me? Because their book. Now I know my family, they are not horrible people. They are loving, kind Muslim uh, people. But because they're following that book, the book are commanding them to do such a thing. So I, I realized that. Yes. And by the way, tomorrow, um, I, I have another dear brother, uh, Osama Dakta which we will be talking about the concept of Islamophobia. Is it a fact or is it a fiction? And he will share from the book what Islam teaches. We understand Muslims, especially these days, especially because of ISIS, like, like what happened to you, you wanted to become an atheist. There is a lot of young Muslims who are disturbed by the images of what the ISIS people or the Al-Shabaab are doing yeah. and yeah. questioning. They're smart. Yeah. They're comparing yes. notes, they're looking, watching, yeah. asking questions as God created us to do so yeah. and realizing there is a problem with this teaching. There has to be some truth out there. And obviously their first reaction is not to say, oh, I want to follow Jesus if they don't know Jesus. If yeah. no one is 
sharing the truth about them, the first reaction is to become atheists. So that's why it's important. I like what you said about in Sweden, no one shared the gospel with you. What a wasted opportunity, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, they wasted 13 years. Many people are living in, uh, many Muslims are in the Western country, 20 years, 30 years, no one, no churches are invited, no Christian are sharing the good news. That's very sad, brothers and sisters. You need to wake up, you you have opportunity. Share the good news, don't keep the light and put under under the table. Share with the others because they need Amen. to know the truth. They need to know the truth. But anyway, I get more, I get a lot of knowledge from uh, following, uh, the brothers I, I, I mentioned before, like David Wood and Sam and, and so on, and, 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 and write down all what they said, and I find out everything is from the Quran. Now I'm, I'm sharing with my husband, and I was sharing with the others, and saying with other Muslims, you know, this is what is going on. And by that time, I was reading the word of God, love your enemy, pray those who persecute you, you know, the, the amazing word of God. And I'm sharing also the gospel. So that make my 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 belief very strong, deep with, with Jesus, and also knowing where I come from and what I left was only waste of time. If I knew Islam is like that, years ago I would leave. But I didn't know. I was just blindly following the book. I did not know the, 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 what it says in the book, but now I know. Even even now we started some videos of, of about teaching about David in Somali language because people has to know what it says in their book. The if Lord. no one will tell them, who will, who will tell them? Because the imams are hiding all this. Uh, it's just they don't even say what it means the Quran, or they change, or they do everything. They sh sugarcoat it. You know, they're not telling the truth. Amen. So, dear sister, my understanding, and I could be wrong, please correct yeah. me if I'm wrong, but no, my no. understanding from interacting with uh, some of the uh, Somalis, by the way, the day they released uh, Captain Philip movie about the Somali pirates, yeah. Uh, yeah. the movie, I yeah. was in Minneapolis, Minnesota at a, a restaurant uh, that yeah. a friend who was Somali, he's not a believer yet, I'm praying for him, yeah. but yeah. he invited me to come in and we were watching the movie. Everybody was excited because one of the members of the community was actually in that movie. So my question uh, to you is I understand that women, especially the mother uh, yeah. or the wife, have a, a very high status in the house. Is that true? Yeah, it's that, that's very true because of uh, we have many of uh, broken relationships. You know, as a Muslim man, he can marry up to four wives. They will leave the wife and uh, with the children. So you can see maybe uh, you will meet a Somali woman. She might be 25, 20, uh, 26 years of age, and she might have six kids, six different daddy. And she become like mom and dad for the children. So Somali women are very strong. So Somali women are the, even now our country 30 years being civil war and the problem, the, the country in function because of women are supporting back home, sending some uh, help, sending some money for their relative, building some schools, doing something. So women are, are very strong. I, I love our, our, our culture. The women are very, very strong, but their relationship, the family are broken family. Because a man can live with marrying other other wives, so the it reason is why I'm asking this question, the reason yeah. why I'm asking is, is that yeah. making your ministry to the Somali woman easier, or do you feel like they're still indoctrinated and it's not going to make a difference? Oh, and uh, our ministry because now it's both of us, my husband and I. But in the beginning, it was me only sharing, and uh, and I think. Uh, now we even have some Somali people, Somali, especially Somali ladies, calling when we have a live stream, uh, calling our number from Somalia. And wow. they, they're saying, you are a good role model for us. You know, the Somali women wow. cannot come exactly. and share the gospel. I'm like, my husband and I, we are the first, first church, first everything, first Somali Christian TV, you can see. There is no Somali Christian TV in this, this world. Only last year, we broadcast our programs in from uh, to Africa, yeah, yeah. Praise so it is, everything is new, but uh, we open in people's eye by the grace of God. It's all about Jesus question. and His grace. Yeah. 
Another question, the younger generation, male or female from the Somali communities, are you noticing that they are becoming maybe more open-minded than the other, uh, the, the previous generation? Because I can speak for Saudi, the older generation is usually content. Even if they agree with you, they'll say, okay, good for you. You yeah. follow Jesus, we still follow Islam, and yeah. ISIS is not a, is, uh, is, are not Muslim, and, and, and yeah. they have all kinds of excuses, simply because I, I sympathize. They've yeah. been indoctrinated all of their life only by prayer, you know, and fasting that they can yeah. snap out of this. Only the power of the word of God and Holy Spirit can get mm -hmm. them out. And I've seen people who are, I mean, I baptized a woman who was 85 years of age last wow. year in Belgium. Mm -hmm. So God can yeah. still work, you know, in the yes. heart of Muslims. But are you noticing the younger generation, uh, Somalis uh, yeah. becoming more open? Yes, yes, more young people, more under 30, uh, most, most be uh, open minded. And many Somalis now become atheists. They don't believe God. They are like, uh, they left Islam. They do not become Christian yet, but at least they are not uh, Muslims uh, anymore. And many are open minded. And also, many young people, and uh, now they're using the internet. And easily people can get in touch with you, Al Fadi, or, 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 or your teachings, you know, or anyone else like uh, uh, David and Sam, and people are following, you know, Christian Prince, and they're doing a good job, you know, especially people who speak Arabic when they start ministry, they, the Somalis especially, they follow more, they love more because they will say, oh, he's Arab, he knows the Quran, he understands, and he, he left. So that means I, I can be the same. I can just follow. So they, they like more, even that. Amen. So yeah. Before I, I have another question for you, but someone is asking an excellent question. They're saying, um, uh, is your live stream done uh, at a specific time because they want to watch it? He has some friends, this gentleman, Daniel. He yeah. has some friends who are Somalis and he wants them to watch. Obviously, they can always go and, and watch it later. But uh, what is yeah. the frequency of your show? How often do and you do that? We do, and we are trying to do maybe more than one, but we started with uh, every Friday, 7 p.m. in the UK time. 7 p.m. Okay, so in the UK that's time. That's why I encourage everyone, go and subscribe to the channel, so much hit the bell so you can receive notifications, and you'll know when it's going to be airing. Now, let but me ask also, you this. But also, yes, brother, we want to, we want to, God willing, God willing, maybe for next week, we want to do another section, uh, maybe Sunday, do in English, my husband and I, because we have a lot of uh, young people who are Somali, Wonderful. who don't speak Somali, and they always Hallelujah. say, please do English. And we have other, other Christians who, who love and supporting the ministry. So we want also awesome. include them. Include them and uh, amen. Yeah, pray, amen. pray for that. You know why yeah, I love you know, people tell me, well, you're from Saudi, you're an Arab. Why yeah. don't you do things in Arabic? Well, I tell them, who's going to reach the 1.3 million Muslims that don't know Arabic? Who's going to reach them? Yeah, amen. Well, amen. So you need to both. speak to them at least in a common language that they can understand because I, yes. I have a heart for them. They need to know yes. the truth. Yes. Yes. Amen. So we do, so we do mostly you, so uh, much. Oh, okay. Go ahead, brother. No, no, please, please finish your thought. Finish, finish your thought. I, I don't mean to interrupt you. I'm sorry. No, no, it's fine. I said uh, mostly we do Somali, but God willing, from next week, uh, we doing a, we start in English. Yeah, yeah. Praise the Lord. So I want to ask you a very personal question. As a yes. woman, when you accepted yes. Christ and you're following yes. Jesus now, and praise the Lord, your husband and your family now. Yeah. Can you give our listeners, and hopefully some Somali woman will be watching, some Muslim woman will be watching yeah. this, what They're is the, the, the major distinction between you as a woman now following Jesus versus your status when you are a Muslim woman following Islam? Can, can you give like two or three different major things that you can compare now? Here is the wow. difference now. Here is where I am now versus where I used to be. Yes, I used to be a slave. Now I'm a child of God, and that's man and female, both both of them. And I was like in Islam, they used to say, uh, woman is uh, like a 50 and man is 100. Now, man and male and female, we are equal in front of God. So I'm not 50 anymore. And, uh, and also, as a Muslim, my husband could even marry up to four other, three other wives and be number four. But praise God now, because I'm Christian, I'm not, we're not supposed to do that. And as a Muslim, they used to say, a woman will go to hell. Most women, 
That's what the what the Quran or, or Prophet Muhammad said. Uh, he's seen most Muslims going to hell, and I was so scared all the time, going to hell. And uh, you have to bless your husband. And heaven, if you want to go to heaven, you have to like, uh, and your husband has to be almost you got, you know, and uh, obey him and do that and do this. And uh, it was a lot of uh, and uh, Bushin women very low position. But now I'm like a human. I'm like a same equal with my husband. And my husband loves me. And we all equal in front of God. I'm not like a 50 and he's not 100. So all that gone. So as a Christian, I think if you are a woman and you are Muslim, it's better to leave Islam because you don't have anything. Because in, in this earth, you are 50. If your dad die, all the money or all the whatever you, you your father left will go to your brother 100% and for you will be like 50. What is that? So, and, and, and you are, right. you are everything, you are low, man is, is above and you are under. But in, in Christianity, there is no male or female, no slave, no, no free, everyone, no Jewish, no Gentile. God said, you are all one in Christ. God has made us in his image male or female. So for women, I think it's best to, best to, uh, it's, it's two win-win situation for me, I can see. And having mm -hmm. uh, Christianity, it's not religion you have to follow and do this in the morning, do this in the, in the evening. It's relationship with your heavenly father. It's right now. I know fa Jesus is my, my, my dad. I believe mm -hmm. father and son and the Holy Spirit. I believe one God, but our God is three different he he uh, we we believe the god the father god the son and god the holy spirit it's one god but his word and his spirit and it's one all together that's what i believe amen amen yeah. what i like about your answer is exactly what i was hoping that uh, the direction you'll take obviously there is so many benefits so many uh yeah. blessings that we get as a follower of jesus but as a yeah. woman especially from muslim background because i understand the yeah. status of woman in islam you talked about the fact that now you're honored your yes. sense of security is yeah. definitely so high. You're not worried about your husband having a second and a third and a fourth wife. No. And you feel <laughs> appreciated and respected, not just by your husband, but by God himself who made yes. you in his image. What an amazing, amazing yeah. thing indeed. Um, nothing yeah. can stop this. Absolutely nothing can um, stop this. Well, dear um, sister, yeah. in the last, uh, in the few minutes that are left, yeah. where can people go? and follow you and your ministry. I know next week we're going to have your husband and hopefully in a week or two after that, I'd like to have both of you in a panel discussion. We want to wow. talk about more things. Well, but tell us, tell people, where can they go to follow your ministry? What is your website? What is your YouTube channel? I mean, I know them, but I just want you to mention to people. Yeah, everything is Somali Christian TV. So you go, if you go somalichristiantv.org is our website. Somali Christian TV in uh, Facebook page. But also... Somali Christian TV YouTube channel, and that's where we are more active now. For after the lockdown, that's where we started to be more focused on YouTube channel. So please, if you want to support our channel or follow us, come to our YouTube channel and subscribe our YouTube channel, Somali Christian TV. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Um, yeah. And uh, how can people... Uh, you know, contribute and support your ministry. And I want to encourage uh, all of you here because my dear brothers and sisters here, they live by faith, uh, just like the rest of us. Uh, yeah. Are you uh, subscribing to Patreon? Uh, can they give yeah. through PayPal? Is there any other ways for them to give? Yes, yes. If you go to our channel now, we started Patreon and also PayPal. Uh, everything is new. No one is there yet. But by Very good. the grace Very of good. God, we will be more people. Yeah, yeah. Are, are you saying? So are you saying? Are you saying because you became a Christian, you, you didn't receive like a million dollars because you sold Islam oh. to become a Christian? No, that's the question they all the time ask. <laughs> I get more than money. I have uh, uh, not millions, but heavenly. Imagine Amen. almighty God. If you have Amen. heaven, you have everything you can imagine. Nothing is lacking okay. me. So it's not only million. It's more than that. Praise Jesus. We have we unperishable have inheritance. Yes. That's what the scripture yes. says. Unperishable inheritance in heaven that's awaits us uh, in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. That, that's what I want to say. Yeah, that's the right, the right way. Yes. Praise God. Amen. Yeah. yeah okay. I want to uh, say, ahead, yeah, I want to uh, just uh, tell uh, our viewers, you viewers um, uh, or anyone, Somali, especially if there is any Somalis watching now, 
and we grow up hating Christian and Jewish as a Somali, you know, as a Muslim. I don't know if all the Muslims, they do the same or not. For us in Somalia, they teach us to love Arab, especially Saudi. And for you, we uh, we adore people like you, Al-Fadi, and hate uh, Jewish and, now, and, and so Christian. Now they hate me, right? Now they're going to hate now me with a hate, passion. You hate you with a passion, yes. And and hate and uh, Jewish and, and, and Christians. And for me, God has saved me. That man being uh, killed, he was a Jewish and he was American. God has saved me through hating those people. Mm -hmm. But now I love people. I love uh, Jewish. I love, I, I wish I can have a friend of a Jewish person. I never had a, a Jewish friend, but I would love to be friend with them because I want to say, I'm so sorry. All the many years we've been hating you for no reason. Now I love Jewish, I love uh, anyone, even I love those who are persecuting me and after me. And, and I'm, I just wanna say the Somalis or the Muslims, please, you need to just do research, go and read the Bible. The Bible is the word of God and it's a loving word of God. It is God who loves you. It's not gonna say, go and die for me, go to jihad. I will give you heaven and 72 virgin. It's not gonna say that. He will say, come and give me all you, you heavy loaded and I will give you rest. So this is mm -hmm. different, different uh, picture of God, the God we had before and God we serving before. And now the one we have now through Jesus Christ, his son who uh -huh. died on the cross and rose from the death. If you believe, if you believe from your heart and confess from your mouth, you will be safe and you will be a child of God as well. You will have relationship with Jesus. You will have the, you will feel and you will hear the word of God, and you can follow Jesus, and you will have everlasting life, eternity. And you're not going to say, Inshallah, I don't know. Maybe if I'm good, maybe if I'm bad. There's no maybe. It is the gift of God through Jesus Christ. Only Jesus is the way to heaven. Believe, brothers. Hallelujah. He loves you. He loves I want, you. I want you to say if you have any words uh, of wisdom from the Holy Spirit to uh, the Somali women who are even married or mothers or Muslim women in general uh, about why Jesus is more important than fear of following him. Yeah, Jesus is more important because he died and paid our uh, our price, the we our penalty. He paid that. He died Amen. for us. Seriously, for me, I did not care when my family disowned me. When they say to kill my husband, to kill me. When they threat me, they they will kill me. When they threat me and they say they will take my children away. Seriously, I did not care. I did not, my life is God's hand. God is the one who take us to here. He will take us to heaven when the, the, uh, the right time comes. And our life belongs to Jesus. My life belongs to Jesus. I don't have a fear because the Lord said, fear not. I am with you. I believe my Lord is with me forever, wherever I go. Even losing that, it is worth it. Because having relationship with your heavenly father is much better to have a, uh, all your family with you and you don't know where you're going to go when you die or not having relationship with God or God looking up to uh, looking you down and uh, calling you slave and you're trying to bless him. You cannot bless Allah. You cannot uh, do anything. You just need to receive this gift of, of God. And it is only through Jesus Hallelujah. Christ, through Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Thank you so much, dear sister, Thank uh, you. for really your courage. Thank you for your heart, for the lost, and especially for our people, and especially for the Somali people, because I know how difficult it is usually to speak to your own versus just speaking to everybody in general. Yeah. But the Lord is going to reward you for what you're doing. We are so thankful <clears throat> for your ministry and a ministry that you are doing jointly with your husband and your family. It is huge blessing to mm -hmm. everyone in the world, but also to the Somali people. And my prayer is that they will at least, at least, Come and listen, watch what you're saying before they make accusations and attacks. And uh, I am thankful for everyone who was with us here today. Please subscribe to our dear sister's channel. Please share her ministry with others, especially if you live among Somalis or you know Somali people, mm. uh, because this is the message of truth that we're sharing with them. It's not about her or her husband or her mm. ministry. It's about the Lord. And that's what matters the most. 
Uh-huh. And we need, don't do what, what she experienced. She lived in Europe for 14 years and no one shared the gospel. Yeah. Do not do the same thing because God is bringing people to your backyard right now for a reason. I tell people this, if you look at the book of Acts chapter 17, verses yeah. 26 and 27, by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, the apostle Paul says, speaking of God, he says, he made from one man, that is Adam, all the families of the earth to live all over the earth to fill the earth and he allotted the boundaries and the dwelling uh, basically the the the, uh, allotted the times and the dwelling places meaning god brought her to sweden for 14 years and sadly no one shared the gospel then he moved her somewhere else and someone took the time to do it so god is bringing somalis to minneapolis minnesota the most freezing place on the face of this earth because he loves somalis and he wanted Christians to reach out to Somalis and he yes. wants them to know the Lord because he wants them to seek him in hope that they may reach out to him and find him. And that's what I want to leave you with. Thank you again for watching this live stream. Uh, be sure to subscribe to our channel also. Be sure to click the bell so you can continue to receive uh, the notifications tomorrow, Lord willing. I will be having our brother um, Osama Duck Duck. We'll be talking about Islamophobia. And next week, uh, we will have a number of people. But most importantly, I want to remind you that next Saturday, the same time, we'll have uh, you know the husband of uh, Sister Shania, who will be with yeah. us here to share about his journey. Mm-hmm. Thank you again, your sister. Thank you Thank for you. what you do. We are blessed and honored to have you. And we pray that uh, this testimony will touch many hearts and many minds. Thank you, everyone who gave through Super Chat. We are really blessed by your giving. Thank you to the moderators for amazing work you do. Until we meet again tomorrow, this is Al-Fadi over and out. God bless. Thank you.